Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. I'm not finished. Watch Sarah Sanders brutally take down Gemma Costa for defending fake news. President Trump called out the mainstream media for reporting multiple fake news stories over the weekend. CNN is getting nervous and when CNN's Gemma Costa tried insulting her for it, she was prepared, and she crushed him. The president is calling out a very direct and false accusation lodged against him. There was nothing more than an individual trying to put their bias into their reporting, and something that frankly has gotten a little bit out of control, said Sanders. We have seen it time and time again over the last couple of weeks. A number of outlets have had to retract and change and rewrite and make editors note to a number of different stories. Some of them with major impacts including moving markets. This is a big problem. We feel it should be taken seriously, said Sanders. Jim Acosta tried to argue that all of this fake news was simply honest mistakes. Sanders was prepared. There's a very big difference between making honest mistakes and purposely misleading the American people. Something that happens regularly. You cannot say that it is an honest mistake when you are purposely putting out information that you know to be false or when you're taking information that has not been validated, hasn't been offered with any credibility and continually denied by a number of people including people with direct knowledge of an instance, said Sanders. I am speaking about the number of reports over the last couple weeks. I am stating that there should be a certain level of responsibility in that process, said Sanders. Why in the world would people believe, CNN, Dale Jackson crushes CNN's Brian Stelter in humiliating way? CNN is quickly losing all of their credibility with the American public. CNN's Brian Stelter had a guest on recently who defended the station's fake news. The mistakes are precisely the reason the people should trust the media. The worst mistakes that press organizations have made in their coverage of Trump has precisely occurred in their overzealous effort to be fair to the president, explained David Frum. However, Brian Stelter met his match when he brought Alabama radio host Dale Jackson on the air. Why in the world would people believe the things that are said if it's always negative over and over and over and over again? That weaponizes the term fake news, asked Jackson. The bottom line is this, people don't trust you guys and the reason they don't trust you is because you are constantly telling them they are wrong, they are stupid, they are racists, and then we're saying, hey, listen to us you wrong, stupid and racist people. It's not going to work, they don't trust you guys, said Jackson. Stelter seemed offended by this claim. When you say they don't trust you guys, I think what you mean, Dale is there's a percentage of the country primarily conservatives who for years and decades have just trusted the press, who do not trust mainstream reporting. It is not a majority of the country, argued Stelter, even though the facts would disagree. Megyn Kelly brings three of Trump's accusers on live television, it backfires miserably. The mainstream media is getting frustrated over Democratic celebrities and politicians being forced to resign over their treatment against women. The media is trying their hardest to paint President Trump as a sexual predator. Megyn Kelly brought on Jessica Leeds, Rachel Crooks, and Samantha Hove, who have accused Trump. These women came forward precisely after the media released their infamous Access Hollywood tape from 2005. We haven't heard much from them since Trump won the election. He was like an octopus. His hands were everywhere described 75-year-old Jessica Leeds. It was so inappropriate. I was so upset that he thought I was so insignificant that he could do that, described Crooks. It was, the dirtiest I felt in my entire life. He would step in front of each girl and look you over from head to toe like we were just meat, we were just sexual objects, that we were not people, described Hove. However, not everything went the way Kelly planned. Not only did the women have no proof, but the White House released a statement providing strong counter-evidence. These false claims, totally disputed in most cases by eyewitness accounts, were addressed at length during last year's campaign, and the American people voiced their judgment by delivering a decisive victory. The timing and absurdity of these false claims speaks volumes and the publicity tour that has begun only further confirms the political motives behind them, says the White House statement.
Parents of NYC suicidal terrorist launches attack against the police from mistreating their son. Akadala is the main suspect behind Monday's failed suicide bombing attempt at the New York City Port Authority bus terminal. Ella was then taken to untreated at the Bellevue Hospital. But according to Ella's family, the police were too hard on their terrorist child. We are heartbroken by the violence that was targeted at our city today, and by the allegations being made against a member of our family. But we are also outraged by the behavior of law enforcement officials, started Albert Foxconn, the legal director for care writing on behalf of the Ella family. W. Ho have held children as small as four years old out in the cold and who held a teenager out of high school classes to interrogate him without a lawyer, without his parents, said Khan. These are not the sorts of actions that we expect from our justice system, and we have every confidence that our justice system will find the truth behind this attack and that we will, in the end, be able to learn what occurred today. Thank you for your time, said Khan. Although five people were hurt in the explosion, there were no deaths and every victim is expected to make a full and healthy recovery. Sarah Huckabee Sanders eviscerates Obama for trying to take credit for Trump's economic boom. Obama angered Americans everywhere when he announced that he was going on an Asian-speaking tour, shortly after President Trump. But that's not all Obama did. During a climate change summit in Chicago, Obama tried to take credit for the incredible growth we saw in the economy since President Trump was elected. Obama claimed that the economy loved his climate change resistance. As we took these actions, we saw the U.S. economy grow consistently. We saw the longest streak of job creation in American history by far, a streak that still continues, by the way. Thanks Obama, said Obama. Wow. Sarah Huckabee Sanders slammed Obama for this in an interview with Fox News' Jesse Waters. It's laughable that President Obama thinks he has anything to do with the success of where the economy is right now, started Sanders. This is all a direct result not just of President Trump's swearing-in, but from the minute he was elected, consumer confidence got stronger and businesses wanted to participate in our economy again because they have confidence in this president, she explained. Sarah also tweeted about President Trump's economic success. I'm old enough to remember when President Trump's election was going to crash the market. One year later, market up over 30 percent, 2 million new jobs and 1,000 new manufacturing jobs created every day just last month. And now Obama wants credit for the booming Trump economy, tweeted Sanders. James Woods crushes Chelsea Handler for calling Sanders a whore with disturbing video from Handler's past. James Woods completely humiliated Chelsea Handler for calling Sarah Huckabee Sanders a whore. That harlot that they're dressing up and trolloping out every day? I mean, one day she has no makeup on at all, the next she has six foot long eyelashes, she's got cleavage and summer whore lipstick all over her face. Can you believe what they turned her into? A proper trollop, said Handler while describing Sanders. Handler did not apologize for her mean-spirited attack. She actually doubled down, sharing a video of a Sarah Huckabee Sanders makeup tutorial. The video was meant to mock her appearance. When Handler was confronted with the fact that she is being a very bad feminist, Handler justified her behavior by saying that Sanders is pure evil. While many people are upset over her attacks on Sarah Huckabee Sanders, James Woods hit Chelsea Handler in the most brutal way possible. He showed a clip from her past. A very humiliating clip of her being urinated on. This person berates the character of at Sarah Huckabee on a daily basis. Hashtag Chelsea Handler Human Urinal tweeted Woods. Mike Huckabee commented on Handler's attacks on his daughter as well. She seems like a very angry and bitter person. Look, she's almost as old as me. So this is at a point in her life, she needs to start mellowing out. And she seems to be just in a rage. The sad thing about it, she boasts about the two abortions she had at 16. I think in many ways she's jealous of my daughter, said Huckabee. Watch Don Lemon compare himself to a bullied 11-year-old after President Trump insults him. President Trump has been fearless in calling out the mainstream media. CNN is certainly not happy that we now have a president who stands up to them. In the fight back against Trump, CNN compared Don Lemon to a viral video of an 11-year-old boy who had been bullied. Another false story, this time in the failing at New York Times, that I watch four to eight hours of television a day, wrong. Also, I seldom, if ever, watch CNN or MSNBC both of which I consider fake news. I never watched Don Lemon, who I once called the dumbest man on television. 
bad reporting, tweeted President Trump. Dana White tweeted out a video of an 11-year-old boy speaking out against bullying. Meet Keaton Jones a very smart little boy who is being bullied at school. This video is heartbreaking. I want to bring Keaton to Vegas and hang out at UFC headquarters. If anyone knows how I can reach the family please let me know. Thank you everyone, tweeted White. Don Jr. watched the video and offered his assistance. This boy is incredibly brave and the video really got to me. At Dana White, if he takes you up on your offer to see UFC headquarters, I would be honored to host him and his family at our place if they need somewhere to stay, tweeted Don Jr. So how did CNN respond? In a world where bullies torment kids on social media to devastating effect on a regular basis with insults and name-calling, it is sad to see our president engaging in the very same behavior himself.